Trump. I get to lead a team of fantastic and brilliant concept artists, and our role is to create the characters that you see in the game. That's everything from the main hero cast you see to the creatures, the gods, and monsters that you come across. The hope is that we get something that feels unique and stands up to the history and the legacy of what the God of War franchise has always done. I feel like from the first games, that was a similar approach that they were doing, and that's not always easy. My name is Raf Grossetti, I'm the art director for God of War Ragnarok. Hi, my name is Marissa Coppert, I am a character technical artist. Hi, my name is Angela Rico and I am a senior character artist in God of War Ragnarok. Hi, I'm Della Longfish and I am the lead of the character concept team at Santa Monica Studio. Come in! What in all yarns be the happen to him? As a character technical artist here at SMS, I rig most of the characters and props that you see throughout the world. As character artists, our job is to create 3D assets based on the beautiful concept that are provided to us. We do this by making sure that the silhouettes on the models and the textures and materials stand out instantaneously. So when you see our characters on the screen, we want you to almost like them immediately or have a connection to them to some extent before even interacting with them. As our director, I get the chance to collaborate with all the departments in the studio, from, uh, from narrative to viz dev, because we want to make sure the factions feel correct, all the races belong to where they they're supposed to be, like all the realms, I have very specific characteristics about them to make sure they all fits within the God of War universe. Sorry, one more thing. Although, these are gifts I'm giving to you, so I shouldn't be sorry and you should be thankful. Anyways, here, please be careful. In the God of War 2018, we saw Brock and Sindri, and that was the tip of the iceberg of the Holdra, and in God of War Ragnarok, we actually get to go and visit Svartalhan where they're from, and a great part of that too, is we want to make sure that we expand the cast. You know, we've just seen a little bit of, of what was represented, and that was something that we hadn't seen. Svartalheim is a, is a beautiful place. There's a lot of different biomes. You go from wetlands to mountain springs, and took a lot of inspiration from um, hot springs, from the minerals that you find, a lot of colorful minerals, a lot of resources. So the dwarves being the races that they are, we knew we wanted to play on that as well. So you see their influence on Svartalheim on every corner. It's a realm where you're going to find a lot of other environments. There's quarries. It's a very industrial city. It's very organized. And you can see all the dwarves putting all the work into creating this great city where they live in. Knowing that they're blacksmiths, that that was kind of reflected within their clothing. And you see that within the houses and every inch. We want to make sure that both the environments and characters had a cohesiveness that felt like Every inch of it felt like it went together and was designed specifically by them. And again, that's something that we haven't seen in a, some of the other realms and is unique to these characters and their location. And the hope, it all goes together and creates a feeling within a realm that you're excited to see, feels unique, and really creates that sense of wonder where you want to go back. When designing a character to match the geography around it, uh, first it's definitely dictated by the viz dev team and the narrative team and the story team. They make sure the character is designed for features that fit in with what they need. When designing the Grimms, we took a lot of inspiration from the environment. So we took a lot of inspiration from lizards, creatures that kind of belong to that environment. They have those big claws, they're small critters to the big ones and really building up that race, making sure they kind of belong and that that realm felt lived in and that ecosystem felt like very diverse. Making sure that it feels natural and believable is a big part that goes into the design elements. So our artist Stephen Oakley uh, put a lot from the environment concepts that Luke Berliner and his team were doing and put a lot of those into actually the skin texture, even the bulk and volumes that you see in the characters. So it really does feel like not only do they belong in there, but you're able to see them and they stand out for the combat experiences with the character. Character design is all about storytelling. In the example of Derling, his uh, design was really tailored to convey his own personality. He's a bookkeeper from Svartalheim, and because his job demands, he's very organized, he's very rigid, and he's a very play-by-the-rules kind of guy. But then in contrast, you have his friend. So when you see Derling connect with his pet, we see that he's not all just this rigid librarian guy, but that he's got a softer side to him. I do believe that we're all storytellers, no matter what we do, even in the tech side of things. I mean, we work to make these characters that then tell a story, and we can also kind of put those features and traits on our rigs. 
The prophecies say Fimblewinter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming! Svarheim did wars, working with different races from different realms, so definitely seeing Ragnarok and the impact of that into the realm, it puts them into this position that's very interesting to see which side they take and things that they're building. So as you go through the level, you find out a lot more about this race and the political situation that is happening while Ragnarok and Fimblewinter is taking place. Hey, dwarves! Oh, they're uh, running away. One thing that our hope is with the cast of characters within every realm is not that it's just enemies there to kill you. We want to feel believable and that there's a wide world out there, but we want to kind of plant these seeds within any cast of the realm that there's more outside of what you're playing. And we want the fans to feel like they can go back and really visit those areas and want to go explore. If the geysers and smell here are worse because of Fimble Winter, maybe the earthquakes are too? Aye. Going into Svarheim, I'm really excited for players to experience all the new races that live in that realm, how they play. They play very different from anything we had before. There's uh, wildlife, it's something that kind of goes unnoticed, but we took a lot of effort to make the realm feel believable. So there's a lot in Svarheim, a lot to explore. I'm really excited for Svarheim. It is a gorgeous realm. After looking through some of the cinematics and playing some of the cinematics and playing through some of the puzzles, I'm so excited how water plays such a big feature in that realm. And that is so cool. I'm most excited for fans to finally get to see how the dwarves live. Brock and Sindri were fan favorites in the last game. So I think that all the work that we've put into Svarlheim is going to make all the other dwarves shine just as bright as the brothers did. The best part I have is turning on the YouTube and seeing all these callouts and all the attention to detail that the fans pick up on. That's one thing that we keep in mind when we're designing characters to make sure we do right by the fans. And knowing that all the work we put in will be seen and appreciated, that's not always the case, but our fans just get every little nook and cranny on that. And we love that and we packed a lot of that in for this new cast and we hope you guys get the same feeling with God of War Ragnarok.